That's awesome. Well, today we're going to be talking about is judgment coming? Uh, how many saw that little Facebook post I put out yesterday? Did you see that? A few, a few of you. Uh, it's just, it just excited. You know, we're living in a bizarre time. Uh, lots of stuff going on, and uh, uh, we have this this big uh, eclipse. And uh, in case you think you you need to go out and buy glasses to look at this, you are not going to see a thing in Regina. Okay, <laughs> let let me just say that now. You'd have to be way 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 easty here uh, to see anything. If you're out of the, outside of the totality area, even a little bit, uh, the sun is very bright. <laughs> Uh, praise the Lord. But there's lots of stuff going on uh, in the world right now. Um, m my wife and I, we don't have cable TV. We have the internet. And I love watching different sermons and trying to stay up in the news and everything else. And right now the internet is just full of stuff about April 8th. April 8th is the, is the day of this uh, big eclipse. And uh, some of the Christian people too uh, are saying, you know, don't go out of your house on April the 8th. <laughs> I mentioned it to Steve and he said, I'm going to stay in my basement all day tomorrow. <laughs> and I just imagined him downstairs with a big chicken cooker over his head or something, you know. <laughs> well, I want you to know you'll be safe outside tomorrow. Say, I'm safe in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Even though the world was to collapse around you, you're safe you're you're okay but uh, I felt like there is a lot of things going on and, and I wanted to uh, address them and I'll just let you know is judgment coming I believe absolutely judgments coming I just don't necessarily think it's tomorrow and I don't think you need to hide in your house at all uh, you just need to be aware of the time that we're in and make your choices uh, accordingly can you say amen uh, I wanted to start with this you know with the eclipse a lot of Christians are tired it to the story of Jonah and, uh, and uh, going into Nineveh. Uh, maybe you've heard some of this, maybe you haven't. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to look at that. Why, why is that happening? How is it good? How is it wrong? How is it right? Uh, you can decide some of this stuff yourself, but I'm going to take you to the Bible passages that talk about this stuff, and uh, I want you to be confident that if God be for you, who could be against you? Amen. So we're going to start in Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 42 in the New King James Bible. And Father God, I just uh, pray that I've got so many notes here, so many thoughts. I pray that you'd sort out uh, what, what you want me to share with this particular group, uh, Father God, so that they are, are not just prepared, they are aware, they are awake, and they are determined to bless you and to serve you in the midst of this time in Jesus' name. One more time for amen. You're good. Okay, well, praise the Lord. Matthew 28, or Matthew 12, I'm sorry, Matthew 12, verse 38 to 42. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given uh, to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater one than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. So Jesus uh, gives this this sign of the of the prophet Jonah, and and so often, if you just look back in Scripture, you'll see parallels uh, going forward, but uh, and that that apply to us today. And, and it's and it's okay to look at Jonah and to look at what's going on here. I, I I think that's okay, but don't get caught up in all the little details of this. You know, Jesus, his crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection is the is almost entirely the fulfillment of this prophetic word. Can you say amen? Jesus, he's a parallel of, uh, of Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of a, of a great fish, some kind of sea creature. And uh, he was, can you imagine, talk about slimy. 
for three days. He thought he was dead. And uh, then uh, the, the Lord had the, the, the creature vomit him up on the beach. Pretty, pretty uh, low rent. Uh, and uh, you know, he'd, asked, he'd asked Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach uh, to those people because I'm about to bring judgment on Nineveh. And Jonah didn't want to do that. In fact, he went the opposite direction. If you look at this on a map, Nineveh's over here and Jonah heads off to sea. Uh, Nineveh is a land journey. It's not a sea journey. He had no business being on a boat. He wasn't taking the long way. He was getting out of there. Uh, he was not obedient to the word of the Lord. I want you to know Jesus was obedient to the word of the Lord. This, this metaphor, this, this example breaks down at certain areas. The main point that doesn't break down is Jonah was three days and three nights in the fish and Jesus was three days, three nights in the tomb and he came out, praise the Lord. We just celebrated that last week. I said, praise the Lord. Uh, Jesus overcame the death and the grave and he is alive today and he's not going to fail you. And he's not going to fail to fulfill his word. And all the prophetic words that he's promised, he will fulfill them, not closely, exactly the way he said it. Can you say amen again? Three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. This is Jesus' fulfillment. And um, anyway, what's that got to do with this eclipse? Well, here's uh, the, one of the, the wonders of living in the day and age that we are now. You know, the Bible is not, it's not inaccurate. It's very accurate. And you can go back and you can find out when this, what king was in place, what was going on. And we know when Jonah went to Nineveh and when he preached. Now, NASA and science and computers and all this, they can follow the moon backwards. They can unwind it all. And they know that right about the time that Jonah was going into Nineveh, they can't quite determine exactly. Some say it was just before he came into Nineveh. And others say just as he arrived in Nineveh, the sky went dark. And there was a full eclipse of the sun. Now what's what's an eclipse? That's when the moon passes between the sun and the earth and and uh, if if you're a, an atheist, I don't know how you deal with all the coincidences, but coincidentally, uh, the earth has a very large moon uh, relative to its size. I don't know if you knew that. Our 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 moon is very large relative to the size of the earth and because of of the magnitude of of the moon, this is kind of really neat stuff. I get into this stuff. Because the moon is so big, it's so heavy, as it circles the earth, it actually, they believe it's spinning the core, the iron core of the earth, the molten core of the earth is spinning like a generator, and it's creating uh, uh, the Van Allen belt that protects us from the harmful rays of the sun. Did you know that? When I was in high school, they didn't know what the northern lights were. They, it's fairies sprinkling dust and, and uh, I don't know. They, they didn't know and, and now they know that this is, this is particles hitting the Van Allen belt and, and, getting, and, and lighting up in there and it's caused by this. Uh, now back to the moon. Here's another coincidence. The moon happens to be, it's a lot, it's a big moon, but it's a lot smaller than the sun. It's 400 times smaller than the sun. And here's another coincidence. The sun happens to be 400 times farther away than the moon. It, say exactly. And because of that, when the moon is in the right place, we get a total eclipse of the sun. It's so, it's so precise that you can see the atmosphere around the sun. That's where we learned a lot of this stuff. Isn't that cool? But they can unwind the galaxy, the universe, the solar system, and they go back to Nineveh. And here there's a solar eclipse right when Jonah is coming in to Nineveh. They, they also believe that there was a massive earthquake. Some think it's the earthquake in Amos 1. I'm not sure that that's, that that's true. But they believe there was a massive earthquake at right around this same time. But they can't, they can't unwind earthquakes. It's just something that happens. They know what happened in that area. And the belief is that as Jonah's coming into Nineveh to preach, after he's done his fishing trip, uh, <laughs> he comes in, there's an earthquake. Do you know that there was an earthquake in New Jersey, in New York, just a couple days ago? 
4.8 on the Richter scale? I've never heard of anything like that. It disrupted the UN meeting. They're, they're, I saw a clip on, uh, they're, they're talking and, and, and it starts shaking in the UN. <laughs> Time to wake up. <sighs> I do have notes. Total eclipse, we talked about that. What's special about this eclipse? Well, a, a total eclipse doesn't happen that often in your particular area where, where you live. And, and uh, the, the Ninevites would have never seen a, a solar eclipse. It, they're, they're fairly rare. Uh, like I said, if you're on the edge of it, you're not really going to see anything. You have to be in totality to really, to really see it. And the one that went over Nineveh went right over Nineveh uh, at this time. Uh, but how many eclipses, how often? Well, since 1776, since the United States has been a country, there's been a total of seven eclipses where the eclipse has gone across part of the, uh, the, the boundaries of the United States. This is going to be number eight uh, coming tomorrow. Well, what's the significance of that? Well, that's not very often. Uh, and, and part of the significance that people are tying to to this one. I'm not saying it, it's necessarily saying this or that, but there's just a lot of coincidences. The last one was just seven years ago, and they only pop up every once in a while, and the last one was on August 21st, 2017, and that happened to be my wife and I's 35th wedding anniversary. So I put her in the car, and we drove to Wyoming to get down into the totality of the, of the thing, and we saw it on a clear sunny. It was, it was amazing. She thought I was crazy, but she actually liked it. My oldest son and his daughter were with us, and we drove down there uh, to see this thing. It was quite a sight. We were outside. The hotel rooms were astronomical. We had to stay a long ways away, get up early in the morning to drive, because I'm way too cheap to spend four or $500 on a hotel room. How about you, Mark? I don't know. We, we, we drove quite a while, and uh, we got there, and it, uh, thousands of the highways are lined outside of the city uh, with people, people everywhere. And it was quite a sight. Uh, let me tell you about it, in case you never see one. How many have seen a total eclipse? There's quite a few of you. So, so you can verify. When it, when it came over, it was like sunset all around, 360 degrees. You know how the sky gets pink and it gets dusky? It was like, dusky, is that a word? Duskish? It's a new word. It was like twilight. <laughs> all the snort. All the way around us. The temperature dropped about four or five degrees and you could hear these thousands of people lining the highway going, <gasps> It was truly astounding. And then it, it blocked out the sun, and then it was, it, you could see the, the corona, and it, you took off the goofy glasses for a minute because you're safe for a second. And then it starts to peek out, and it looks like a diamond ring with the sparkling, and then, and, then, and then it goes in reverse. And one of the most amazing things to me was thousands and thousands of people, and at the end of the eclipse, they all started clapping. And I thought, who are you clapping for? It wasn't Tourism Wyoming that put this thing on. <laughs> that show was right from God. Maybe there was a lot of believers there. I don't know. But they're all clapping. It, it, it was pretty cool. But that was seven years ago. And now to have another one cross the continent on the United States, it's pretty unusual. And here's another unusual thing about this eclipse. That one in 2017 came in around Oregon and went out in South Carolina. So it went from the northwest to the southeast, drawing a line across the United States. And this one's coming up out of Mexico and going going up the eastern side of the United States, right up into Canada, and right on the edge of totality is Montreal and Ottawa. So some of the biggest core areas of the United States are, are going to see this directly, and then into Canada before it goes off into the, the Atlantic. And, and here's some of the novelty of it. It, it draws a letter X. X on North America, like it's being targeted, like God's pointing a finger. Is this a sign? I don't know. You decide, but we're going to talk uh, a little bit about it. 30 million Americans are going to witness e this eclipse, and they're calling it the Great American Eclipse. Well, it doesn't really belong to them. They kind of think they're everybody. <laughs> Can a nation be narcissistic? I don't know. 
Uh, but uh, it, it's the American. Uh, well, is this is this goofy for a Christian to look at this and look to see if it's a sign? Well, I don't really think it's crazy. In fact, I think it's biblical to keep your eyes open and watch what's really unusual, what's going on, and what might mean at this. In Luke 21, verses 25 to 26, we're going to look at that. Luke 21, verses 25 to 26. It says there, and this is Jesus speaking, and there will be signs, say signs. There will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on earth distress of nation with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. So we see it's, it's, it's biblical to, to identify that and expect that there should be signs. And this is not put on by the Americans as much as they name it and claim it. Uh, this is a God sign. Uh, this is a, this is, I believe it's a divine opportunity. I believe it's an opportunity, uh, especially for people of faith, to check their hearts and get right with God. Are, are, you, are you okay? Um, so we talked about a lot of this. Um, Going back to ancient history and to Nineveh, I'm going to read you a little bit of that story. Now, in Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, we'll read that. Uh, Now, this is after Jonah has had his fishing trip, and he's he's finally, okay, God, uh, I'm going to go preach to Nineveh. Now, you've got to remember, Nineveh uh, is... uh, in, in ancient days, it was not a friend of Israel. It was the exact opposite. It was an enemy uh, of Israel up in, I think, northern Syria, maybe Iraq, uh, up in that area. The, the, it's, it's still there and uh, not, not friendly to Israel at all. They'd been their enemies for a long time and uh, they'd done some brutal things. And so this is why Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. Uh, I'm pretty sure he would just assume that God burned them, uh, smoked them right to the ground. He didn't care, but he went finally. Anyway, we pick up the story after his fishing trip, and uh, Jonah 3, 1 to 6, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent, and Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk, Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. And the word of the Lord came to the king of Nineveh. He arose from his throne and laid aside his robe and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he makes a proclamation, not even the animals are going to eat. We're going to, we're going to really heed this sign. Now, try to put yourself back in their time, in their place. They didn't have NASA. They didn't have CNN. They didn't have, you know, some things we need to be really thankful for. <sighs> Do you notice that Canada is, is CBC now? On the internet is CBCNN? Have you noticed that? I thought they had no credibility. Now they're in the negative zone. <laughs> They, didn't know, they weren't aware of any of this. And so right around this time, there's this massive earthquake. It's called the Great Earthquake, or probably the Great American Earthquake. Uh, <laughs> there's this earthquake doing all kinds of destruction. And then there's this little guy, this little Jewish fellow. He comes in, and right around the time he sets foot in Nineveh, it's a three-day walk across this, and right around the time he's doing there, the sky goes black, the temperature drops, it's nighttime everywhere in the middle of the day, Day. Ah, what's going on? And they hear this one, and they listen. Say one prophet. That's good. They listen, day. Eh? So why is this tied today? Well, it happens in the United States. There happens to be seven or eight, depending on who you ask. Places called Nineveh. I don't know who would name that. It'd be like naming your kid, uh, I don't know, Judas or something. Like what? Uh, you know, these are towns, hamlets, areas, little towns, different things. Uh, and, and they're all on the east side. And this, this uh, eclipse is going to run right by most of them. But two of them are in the direct path. And there's also a place called Jonah in here. This is other little tidbits that people are picking up on. And they're going, oh, 
oh, it's a sign from God. Well, I, I think it might be a sign from God. But the idea that he's going to, on April 8th, crush the world, or some are saying it's going to be the rapture. Some are saying it's the second coming of Christ. They really need to read their Bibles, a lot of these people. There's a lot of things that happen before the second coming of Christ. Are, are you okay? Do you, do you, you, I hope you know this stuff. You hang around here long enough, you're going to know it. There's a rapture. There's a temple to be rebuilt. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening. We're really close. But not yet. Say not yet. But God is rattling signs in the heavens. I remember when the blood red moons in the last part of the last decade there, remember blood red, all in these Jewish high days? Man, I was pretty sure we were out of there back then. Then I read that verse that said, when these things begin to happen, say begin, when they begin to happen, look up, your redemption draws near. Not right then. Say, not right then. And I don't believe that the world is going to end tomorrow. Okay? So that's my, that's my opinion. You, you read the scriptures, you, you decide what you think. Um, but viewing the, size, uh, the skies and looking for signs is not uh, unbiblical. It is biblical. And I believe that we're going to probably see a fairly significant judgment coming on the United States in the very near future. Now, uh, in case you didn't know this, Canada is tied to the United States almost completely. If their economy collapses, we're in trouble. If their military collapses, we're in trouble. We need to pray for them. We're living next to the strongest force on the face of the earth, the biggest empire, and thank God they've been somewhat friendly towards us. And uh, why do you think we're never invaded? We got 30 some million, million people in a country with probably the most resources in the world and nobody's invading us. Why has Russia not claimed the Northwest Territories? Why is, well, thank God for our neighbors. I'm, I'm not anti-American. I'm just anti what some of the things the Americans have been doing lately. And to be honest, our Canadian government is not much different. I want to look at a couple recent, when I say recent, I'm talking about a few days ago, maybe two weeks ago, uh, there was, a, the UN had a meeting, uh, that's the place that had the earthquake a couple days ago, it, it, and uh, uh, they demanded a, for, a vote 14 to 0 that Israel give up the fight in, in Gaza, make a peace treaty with Hamas, even though it is their sworn purpose to absolutely annihilate violate Israel. There's no, no giving up hostages. We want you to stop immediately a ceasefire. They had this vote and the Americans normally veto those things. They just put up their hands and said we're not, we're going to abstain from voting. Now you remember the day after that happened, a very large tanker ship hit a bridge in Baltimore. Very unusual. And close to 25% of the American commerce goes under or over that bridge. I didn't know it was so central. Who knew about this silly bridge? Is it a coincidence that immediately, there's a, a, a Walter Koenig wrote a, a, a book, I can't remember the name of it, where he chronicled every time in the last 25, 30 years where uh, the United States has done something anti-supportive, just not, not even anti-Israel, just not supporting Israel uh, on an international thing, a natural disaster within days. Remember Hurricane Katrina? I can't remember what, when they pulled out of Gaza the first time under pressure from the Americans when they got out of there. Uh, that day, Hurricane Katrina started spinning in the North Atlantic, and it took a few days to hit Louisiana. Walter Koenig, uh, uh, I, I can't remember the name of the book. Uh, pretty profound stuff. Uh, well, then last Sunday, something happened. Do you remember last Sunday? Uh, Easter weekend or Resurrection Sunday? On Good Friday, Joe Biden got up and made a declaration. He didn't mention Easter at this time. He said that March 31st would officially be called Transgender Day of Visibility. 
on Resurrection Sunday. Do you think that's insulting to God at all? That's the day we remember the resurrection of his son? Oh, I, I left this little tid, tidbit out. Why did they demand that Israel pull out of Gaza right away? Well, the reason in an article that I read, Ramadan was starting right away. Ramadan ends on Tuesday. It's a month-long holy month for the Muslims. And they didn't want to offend Hamas. Now, who are Hamas? They are these bloodthirsty, murdering barbarians, a world terrorist organization. They didn't want to offend them by carrying on military operations during Ramadan. So they wanted Israel out now. But I guess it's okay to defile Easter and the Christians. I don't think it's okay. Across many government buildings in the United States, the colors of the pride flags were shone, the White House, on Easter Sunday. One commentator said this, putting these two celebrations on equal footing is an outrage and a blasphemy. This represents a larger agenda of the government's years-long erosion and assault on morality and the Christian faith. Why is it so urgent that it be called on Easter Sunday? I know it had been on that day in years gone by, but why the urgency? Couldn't they put it off a day or two? Had to be done now because there's not enough visibility for this group. Well, in the U.S., three entire months and 28 individual days are devoted to the LGBT causes, commemorations, including, and I don't understand all of these. Uh, of course, we started with Transgender Day of Visibility, March 31st. April 6th is the International Asexuality Day. April 10th, the International Day of Pink. Uh, well, I don't know what that is. Day of Silence. I don't know what that is either. For second Friday of April. Uh, April 26th is the Lesbian Visibility Day. Uh, May 17th is the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and bi Biophobia. I don't know what that is. Uh, May 24th, Pansexual Awareness and Visibility Day. Uh, May 22nd, Harvey Milk Day. I looked that one up because I thought that's a funny name. <laughs> Harvey, he was a gay activist that, that got killed. Uh, then there's the entire month of June, Pride Month. This doesn't affect Canada. You think that would be enough? No, July 16th is International Drag Day. And then the entire month of October is LGBT History Month. Then there's the National Coming Out Day on October 11th. Now, that's a good day to stay in your house, Steve. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then there's Spirit Day that's different times in October. I'm not sure what that is. Internet, intersex, I thought it was internet. Intersex Awareness Day, October 26th. And then the entire month of November is now Transgender Awareness Month. And then on November 20th, November 20th is Transgender Day of Remembrance. Now these are all official days declared by the leadership in the states. Uh, it was really urgent that they put this on Easter Sunday. Couldn't wait. So there's the weird sex stuff. And then there's the increasing pressure on Israel that's intensifying uh, as we speak, they want Israel to end the war immediately. Somebody said that they're pulling out of southern Gaza. Somebody told me that. I don't know if that's true. Uh, immediately sign a, a treaty with Hamas. Create a two-state solution. Did you know the Bible specifically says that those that try to divide Israel, he's going to whack them? That's the Murphy translation. That's, uh, that's the Prince Albert version. <laughs> I met a, a young lady from Prince Albert today, and she actually knows people that ran me out of town. I mean, that knew me. <laughs> you know, Hezbollah, who are the another vassal of, of Iran, are in the north of, in Lebanon, just north of the Israeli border. 
and the Iranians had, I don't know, eight or 10 or 12 of their top military officials from Iran. This is just last week, meeting in Syria. I think they were getting together to discuss uh, Easter eggs or something like that. That's probably, it's probably innocent. Anyway, Israel found out about it and flattened the place and killed all these guys. Like, what are they doing there anyway? Well, Iran freaked out and, they, and Hezbollah has freaked out and said, when Ramadan is over, we are going to violently uh, take revenge on Israel. Right now in Israel, there's no holidays for the military. All the people that are on, uh, uh, on leave are called up. All of those that are what would be like in the reserves are all called to attention. They're, they're, they're on high alert. And uh, uh, Ramadan ends Tuesday. So we've got another thing that could trigger international conflict. And uh, Canada is not immune to us, immune to this either. The Canadian Prime Minister has also been pressuring Israel. But uh, just in a minute, on, it, it, it says this in Genesis 12, 3. This is really early on in the scripture. Talking about the nation, the descendants of Abraham, specifically Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that's Israel. He says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you in all the families of the earth, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. God says he will curse those who curse Israel. So we've got these things going on and the persecution against, I don't know if you know this, the church and our Christian faith is being blasphemed. It is being relegated to the sidelines. They wouldn't let any kids, I guess there's 40,000 kids come to the White House to roll Easter eggs. It's a 140 some year old tradition and they, they said absolutely no Christian symbols or religious symbols on these Easter eggs at all. Because it's transgender day of visibility. I'll tell you what, God, God's not impressed with this. I read, uh, I think it was this morning or yesterday morning, an article. Uh, uh, this is in the courts in, in, in the UK. Uh, right now, somebody is pressuring the government to pass a rule that uh, it, it should be okay to not hire Christians for your job place. That's, that should be okay discrimination because if you hire a Christian and there happens to be an LGBT person working there, they could be so offended they might even kill themselves so therefore it's okay to say no to Christians working in your job placement I, I wish I was making this stuff up we're, we're coming into a really t hard time for the church how are you going to do in the midst of this Isaiah 60 verse 2 when deep darkness covers the face of the earth the glory of the Lord will be seen on you say on me God wants you to arise at this time. My wife, where will you stand? How will, how will you respond? What will you do? Is judgment coming? Absolutely. I just don't happen to think it's tomorrow. I think we still have some time. Say time. It's not just not standing with Israel, abortion, euthanasia, drug addictions, blatant in-your-face escalation and promotion of sexual deviance of every different type that you can imagine and probably some stuff coming down the pipe that you can't imagine. I read some statistics yesterday that I haven't really had time to cross-check. I, 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 I looked a couple places. I found two different surveys of American people. That's where all the big surveys are. One said that just over 90% and one, the other one was 81% of men surveyed regularly view pornography. Would some of them be in the church? And just so we don't let the women off, off the, the same surveys they're saying about 60% of the women. This is, a, this is a, a disease. Do you think God notices that? The same sites were saying 60% of all pornography emanates from the U.S., 
Now, the U.S. has done a lot of good things. They're not totally evil. You know, they've, they've kept peace. They've done this. They've done that. Thank God that they came and ended Nazism with the help of the Canadians. We don't get talked about much, but we did a lot in that war, too. They've done a lot of good things, but there's a lot of really negative stuff going on in the States. Is God going to judge it? You bet. When he went to Nineveh, he gave him 40 days. And right now, I believe we're in a one. I think this is probably the final uh, warning. They're getting so out of control with their uh, the immorality and everything else. I think God has just about had enough. This doesn't mean it's a judgment on the whole world. That'll come too. Uh, but I think they may be knocked down a notch or two. Franklin Graham said this recently. Uh, he says, the, the Bible's, he's quoting Isaiah 3, verse 9. You can look this up later. And he's equating uh, Israel there to the United States now. He says, they proclaim their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to them, Isaiah 3, verse 9. He says, Franklin Graham says, judgment is coming. Instead of celebrating sin, we need to confess our sin, repent of our sins, and ask God for forgiveness. Now, in Nineveh, here's again the parallel breaks down. Nineveh repented. Can you see the left-wing leaders of the United States and Canada and Europe repenting? I would like to see it, but I don't have a lot of hope for it. I think we're getting close to some cataclysmic events. But when you see all these things happen, don't be filled with anxiety. That's not what God has planned for you. Don't join Steve in his basement with a slow cooker over his head, <laughs> hiding on April 8th. No, when deep darkness covers the face of the earth, the glory of the Lord, say the glory of the Lord, will be seen on me. Peter failed because of arrogance and self-will and determination. You will succeed because of the power of the living God living and moving in you. Peter wasn't baptized with the Holy Ghost at this point. He failed. He faltered. God wants you to stand. Can you say amen? amen. Well, the nations won't repent. I hope the church will repent. I did some very good word searches in Hebrew and Greek. You want to hear all about them? Should only take another 15 minutes or so. Ross? Yeah, go ahead, Pastor. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> It means a, a change of mind, a change of purpose. It's a, it, it, in, in Greek, it's metananeo. It, it comes from two words, after to think. To think after. To think after what? To think after an encounter with Jesus, you change your thinking, you change your behavior. Say change. I don't care how you came into this church. I'm concerned about how you leave here. You might have come in here weak and beaten down like Peter, standing in your own strength. God wants you to leave this place filled with the Holy Ghost and power, filled with his determination to stand. We're called to stand out. Peter was called to stand out and failed. I think I'd have failed too. But I don't want to fail now. That reminds me of a song, Little Feet. Feet don't fail me now. <laughs> you know who that is. Philippians 2, 14 to 15 says, Do everything without complaining or arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean and innocent lives as children of God. I'm going to say that again. Live clean and innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Say clean and innocent. 
So stuff is coming. Don't get depressed by it. Don't get discouraged by it. Don't get anxiety by it. Change, repent of behaviors. Maybe you're one of the nine and ten that's doing this, or lady six and ten. I, I don't know. Jesus is giving you an opportunity. Justin Trudeau may never repent. Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi may never repent. But will you? Will you? This sign may not be for them. It may be for us. We Those... hope you enjoyed today's worship service. I'm the other Pastor Terry. If you're new here, we would love to meet you and have you introduce yourself at ReginaVictory.com. You can drop us a line and let us know you are watching.